guess now we're going to get to the interesting part for you. And that is different types of stroke. And although till now we were talking only about ischemic strokes, you know that there are other ones too. But the ischemic process is very much under it as well. Okay? So we're going to first divide, and I'm going to see how I did it over here. So, so first we're going to divide strokes, or basically the major division of strokes, or what, you, what, what is the other term you use for strokes? And now it's more popular, but stroke is like stroke. It's a nice, nice word. So it's tough, hard, precise word. It's called cerebral vascular accident, but it's the same as stroke. Yeah, but it's for people who like to talk a lot, okay? Okay, so stroke cerebro va cerebrovascular accident, okay? Yeah? But anyways, as I say, you have two main types, and what are the types? Ischemic and hemorrhagic. But who's, which one is the most common one? Ischemic, and how much? 80%, or 80, remember 80, it's better. Okay, 80% of strokes are ischemic, which is pretty good, because... Uh, you can give the what? TPA. You can give TPA, but you sure don't want to give TPA to a hemorrhagic stroke, okay? Yeah? Because you're gonna melt his brain, okay? You're gonna melt the brain. Anyway, so so, but maybe I should. I don't know. Mm, this is not nice. I will name this ischemic. Ischemic stroke. And hemorrhagic is going to be later, okay? But we're going to do now ischemic strokes, but only one very important comment. How is it with CT and ability to see ischemic stroke? How long it takes that you will see ischemic stroke on a CT? And how it will look like? How will a ischemic stroke look on a CT? It's going to be darker. It's going to be darker. It gets darker. But when will you see it? If I'm going to have, for example, my middle cerebral artery is going to be blocked now. If it's left, I'm going to have any part of this one on top like this, although it's very, my talking is very much, it's near aphasia. Anyways, what? How, how long it takes? Can you do it? No. No way. Well, no days. way. Months. Much more, yeah, yeah like third day. It's days. It takes days to see ischemia on CT. Obviously, uh, but the, the, the thing that students don't understand, and many doctors also, the best way how to know that the brain is functioning well is what? It's going to be evaluation. Yeah. If you're able to count one, two, three, move your hands, we know function is fine. Okay, so when? But uh, if there is a, of course, if there is a focal deficit, neurology deficit, then it's a stroke. But I will see it on a CT like in days. On MRI, how fast I can see it? No. no. 12 hours is the earliest. 12 or 24 hours. So basically on MRI, you can see it much faster than on CT. Guess what is the golden standard for stroke? What a diagnostic test you will do? For what? That's that. But I, I gave you, I gave you just a little hint. If you were paying attention, you're gonna figure it out. I gave you a sort of not to be obvious, but I gave you a hint. So guess what? <laughs> Yeah, really. And you will you will notice right away when I'll tell you. Okay, the golden standard standard is CT. How come? How come I'm having a stroke? I'm having a paresis now, and they will immediately send me to CT. Why? Is it like a compressed CT? No, no more CTs. A compression the CT from the start and No, 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 That's a good idea. You want to act. To see that it's not. Again, the point of the game, because when will you see bleeding stroke? Immediately. And that's what you want to know. That's immediate. There is a, and it's going to be white. There's going to be a white mass. 
And that's what you want to exclude. You want to know if there is a bleeding, because I'm having a functional, uh, uh, I'm, I'm having a neurologic problem, and if there is no bleeding, I really know it's the other type, the most common, it's ischemic, and I can give immediately TPA. That's the, that's the trick. So you want to know if it's hemorrhagic, and if you see bleeding there, you, you know, oh, no way, no TPA, I will kill him. And in some cases, you're going to do surgery, okay? And basically, okay, to, to even uh, like deepen your knowledge about treating, you give TPA, as I told you, if it's ischemic, it's confirmed on a CD because you don't see bleeding there, then it has to be ischemic stroke. And if, if it's three hours after the stroke, which is the only 15% of people who come to the hospital like early, okay? If now I would have a hemiparesis, yeah, maybe they would, they would it won't be on time. But first, I want to see if that is not bleeding. Okay? But so I will exclude bleeding. And if it's less than three hours, remember three hours, so it's four and a half, and it doesn't matter. Give TPA. If, if it's more, you give aspirin. Okay? You give aspirin only. But there's one more thing you can do. And it's, it's coming, uh, it's more and more well, like, popular. But it's up to technologies. Okay? And guess what you can still do? It's a ischemic stroke, but so basically you have a thrombus somewhere. And what will you do? You do antiaerectic and you'll try to find the thrombus and you can pull it out. You can pull out. And the worst thing, the worst factor for timing in stroke is sometimes they don't know for five hours that they, 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 they had a stroke or they, they're having a stroke. Okay? Yeah? So, so now ischemic stroke. 80% of them are ischemic. Okay? And I'll give you some ideas what could cause the ischemia. Okay? You see that you see everything. So and the first first is about let's say uh, arterial thrombus. Okay, so arterial thrombus. Arterial thrombus. And you can divide these into two strokes. Large vessel. Okay and small vessel. Small vessels are like lower than 200 microns in diameter, small vessels, okay? So large vessel uh, infarction is what? What could that be? The big ones, so carotids, internal carotids, yeah, internal carotids, what else? You can go up, so everything around the villus, villus cycle, bruce villus cycle, okay? Yeah, what, what else? The cer cerebral anterior, cerebral media, cer cerebral posterior, right? And all, of course, the basilar system. So, so, so basal artery and vertebral arteries, these big ones, okay? And the most common mechanism under this is the same like with other ischemias, and the most common in humans is what? It's atherosclerosis, okay? So, so that, that's the atherosclerosis. Ateroma is there. And this triggers platelet adhesion, application, and thrombus formation, and you are you are having one nice stroke, okay? And typically, this means like big, big trees, big, because it's a big muscle, it means big parts of the brain are ischemic. Big parts will be dark. I, I'm gonna show you some CTs today too, very exceptionally, okay? Because it's more fun. Anyways. So I'm describing it now, but don't worry, I'll give, give you a feeling of a CT, too, an MRI. Okay, so anyway, so large vessels, small vessels. Guess what are the small vessels? And I'm sure anatomists told you. And if they did not, they're not the anatomists. What small vessels are typically in connection with strokes? And I'm sure you know. You call them? in one general term, penetrating arteries. Heard about them? Those are the ones which go up, so for example, from um, medial cerebral artery, they go up towards base ganglia, thalamus, okay? Remember these pair front arteries, the small ones? Okay, and, and these are the small, small, these are the small vessel uh, strokes. And over here, the main factor which we think is hypertension. 
And funny thing is, now we are talking about ischemia. So the blood is not flowing there, but the same ones are very easily also bursting. So the penetrating arteries are behind these type of strokes, which we call what strokes? And pathologists told you they like it in the brain because you form small lacunas there. Lacuna strokes, remember? Lacunas? If you do a dissection, they have holes there, small holes, lacunas. So these are the these are responsible for lacunas, lacuna strokes, lacuna strokes. And those are the small ones, like if you have a, this is a media, okay, arteria cerebri media, and these are the ones which go up like this, and you have a, and they get blocked, and you have a stroke over here in this place. And when, when, it, when immune system like, like puts it out, you're going to have holes there, lacunas, okay, yeah. So, and this could be like, these are the branches of media. Also with the posterior, if I will draw a, if if you want, I can draw it for you. But this is a, this, this is a, if this would be a look from, okay, I'm gonna make it like back. This would be which one? What arterial? This is a media. This is anterior. This one is communicants. And how is it here? This is posterior, okay. This is what? This is vertebral, okay. And over here, what what this is like? This one goes in front. This is a, this is actually a, what this part? What do you call it? Anterior circulation. This is a posterior circulation. And over here, you have what? But I sh it should get from inside, but it doesn't matter. It's like 3D. You see? You see this 3D? This goes down over there. You see? So these are the posterior communicants. There are two posterior communicants. Okay. These ones, these two. Okay? And the branches, other ones are over here, the perforant, from, from the posterior one. Okay? So from the media, and, and these have also lacunas over here. This can happen. Okay? Yeah? Also, then you have small penetrating, important to the brain stem. This is very dangerous. There is a problem. Okay? But but mostly think of these two, two up over here. That's so typical. And But the main mechanism is hypertension and as, the, as these vessels, these small ones, are fighting the tension all the time, they're trying to keep the tension inside, and they don't want to like get larger. So what will thicken? Their media. They get, and you call it lipohyalinosis, and it's again a theory, but this is behind. So hypertension, and as a consequence, lipohyalinosis of the media of these small vessels, and and these, so they are more prone to to get like obstructed and you're going to have lacuna stroke. And by the way, lacuna strokes are the most common ones. They have like, if we talk about the strokes, all kinds of strokes, lacuna strokes are the most common. Large vessel strokes are like, let's say 10%, okay, or a bit more, but doesn't matter. And remember that uh, lacuna strokes are the most common one, 20%, okay. So these are the ones in connection with a focal traumas, which was formed there, okay? Then you have another type, and this is the one we already talked about a bit. And it's not a thrombus, but it's a flying thrombus. The flying thrombus is from where? Typically, it can be from where? Cardioembolic. Cardioembolic strokes. Okay, so the, the, the thrombus is formed in, 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 in heart. It could be due to AFib. That's why you're getting warfarin all the time. That's what you are afraid of, AFib. AFib, why are you getting warfarin? Because you don't want to get emboli flying into your head. Okay. Also, there could be a on the wall. Then a thrombus is formed there and it can fly up. So any kind of an infarction, or if you have an aneurysm of a heart, again, it's a place prone for thrombus formation, and you don't care so much about the thrombus there, you care about when it, it's, it's released and flies up, okay? Okay, and of course, the, as, as it is built, everything which flies are out from the heart mostly flies up, like if you have, you know, if you have like heart ticks over here, it likes to go up, okay? So, so remember, this is a cardio, cardio, embolic stroke and 
yeah, small emboli. If they get dissolved, you get just here. If they won't, they're going to have stroke. Okay? So, this was cardioembolic. And there's one more. One more special type I'm sure you don't know about. But by now, from today, you will know. And it's called watershed stroke. It's, you know, when you have river, the trees are supplied from one river and the other one in between there is a desert, isn't it? You know, that's watershed. And it's just the same idea. But when this will happen, it's a stroke, it's called watershed stroke, and it means that the most prone tissue, part of the tissue, is at the borders of the arteries. Ar arteries have their uh, regions that they supply, and where the regions meet, that's the most prone place for stroke, because it's the one which gets the least oxygen and the least glucose. And when will you see this? What do you think? Anytime you're going to have hypotension. Anytime you're in shock or whatever, unfortunately, the perfusion gets so small and small to the brain that cells at the end of this, uh, this supply chain will start to die, and you have these specially formed watershed strokes, okay? So, for example, and you sort of can look at it on, on two ways, on a CT, for example. If it's going to be cortex only, where will you see watershed stroke? This is, this is like between media, this is dead over here, okay? So this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, and it's like, this is anterior, our, uh, in, this is be anterior, this is media, and this is posterior. So exactly like over here, you have like two lanes of dead cells, and that's called watershed. And it, it, this is when it is like located in cortex. If it's deeper, then it, it's between, for example, example these uh, lenticular striate artery and the media. So it's going to be like in, near the basal ganglia and thalamus, there's going to be, a, again, a border of dead cells. Okay. So, so this is a watershed infarction, and it's every time someone has some high, longer hyperperfusion of brain. Okay, so no emboli, no, 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 no. I, I, actually, this could be also due to uh, occlusion of uh, carotids, for example. Okay, if one is occluded somehow, yeah, some cells will get it, some don't. So you're going to have watershed. Okay, so basically, it's about hypotension. You could, it's also hypotension if carotids will get occluded here. There's hypotension behind it, okay? But it can happen to like general hypotension in shock, for example, or or local hypotension, but that would be only on one part of the brain, okay? Yeah? So that's watershed infarction. So these are ischemic ones, okay? And now let's get to hemorrhagic ones. So, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.